Hello, I'm Timothy Hobbs, and today I'm going to be doing a live coding session for Vegan Buddies. Last week I was working on the Matrix Bot, and I managed to get the example Matrix Bot program to function. Um, and this week I want to start actually, hopefully, implementing some kind of functionality, or at least, at least getting some tests of uh, like scaffolding set up. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Emacs and view vegan buddies and here we have the matrix geographic user index bot. I'm going to launch uh, the bot. Uh, So I need to launch element desktop so I can try to interact with the bot to see if the bot's working and I uh, need to launch the, well I need to launch actually the matrix home server first, the local matrix home server. So I'm going to go to PU vegan buddies and then do dot slash dev develop. And this launches uh, Synapse right here. And now that Synapse is running, I should be able to launch Element Desktop and connect um, to the home server. So uh, right now the bot is programmed to just have um, these commands that are in the example bot code. And what I want to do, I guess, is I want to first try to set up a test framework for bots, for matrix bots. I don't think that one exists. I want to basically create a bot that can do a replay, not attack, but it'll replay test uh, to see if another bot is acting as expected. So I haven't started doing that yet, but I can try to start. Um, I guess a replay bot for Matrix is something that's generally useful. It might be the better idea to like try to code it as its own self-sufficient application for like in Rust. And I think I'm actually going to do that, even though it seems like more work. In order to do that, I need to uh, Go ahead and start a new Rust project, Vegan Buddies, and I'm not really sure where to put it. Maybe I should create like a new folder. Make I should make this bigger certainly. Make their util util and in util I need to do make their uh, matrix bot tester. And then I can uh, cargo. I don't know what you need to do to like start a Rust project. Actually, I don't remember in it. Okay, and so now I have this um, a binary cargo application with a, a source file already pre-created. I have a main.rs and a cargo.toml. And I need to go to Emacs and copy some of these dependencies. Specifically, I need to copy the matrix bot API to the new matrix bot tester application. So matrix bot tester is dependent on, wait, what just happened? Uh, cargo.toml, there we go. And then I want to go ahead and copy the example code from the main file that I already have here. So that would be here.
It's kind of a mess right now, but I'll clean it up as time goes on. Maybe I should actually have um, some of that code here so that I can make it so that it's a properly documented or self documenting binary, like CLI binary. Um, matrix bot tester. Uh, a matrix bot for testing other matrix, bot, uh, matrix bots. takes a YAML file. Should it be YAML or TOML? I don't care. Like people hate YAML, but um, I don't really have an opinion on the matter. Um, and a Nick and sends the messages from from the yaml file to the nic and checks whether there the nic responds as expected exit exits with status code 1 if unexpected messages are received okay and so I also need the uh, to pull over config and clap I guess And then so I also need to make it so that it requires a bot config toml file where the username and password for this test bot will be stored. Okay, um, so I need to look up how to do that in clap as well. So I'm removing these comments here because this code is going to soon get relevant and it's just much easier to navigate code when it's not so big. Okay, so now I need to look up, remind myself how crates.io clap, how clap deals with a command line arguments, how that I can add, how I can add a new command line argument since I don't recall. So I need to create an arg struct and use these um, uh, these macros or whatever you call them to decorate the um, struct. I don't recall now whether I have in my other, in, in the main uh, application. Uh, I, I do not have an args struct in the main application. Okay. So.
So actually I'm going to be using a completely different syntax than this one if I follow that tutorial. Um, I'm not really sure why there's two different syntaxes, it's a bit confusing to me. But this one should work as well. So I need to create a mod the R mod uh, folder or lib folder is it lib I think and then args.rs and then here I can go ahead and define the command line arguments that I need uh, so I'll need a bot config file and uh, this comment isn't superficial actually uh, that's actually kind of strange so when so this text actually comes from the comments very weird so I'm going to describe this program so I already did that actually um, go ahead and cut that out put it here so I need a, a string and I need to um, bot config Toml file that uh, lists the uh, test bot username password and and I need to remind myself now of uh, the format what the fields are so that's going to be in test data bot config user password and home server URL. I'm going to go ahead and put ticks around that so it's pretty clear that those are fields. And it says that the directory does not exist and I want to create the directory. So here we have one. I guess I'll if bot config is already toml, then I'll use toml for the replay. So replay to, and then the last thing. Uh, So it so it's going to be a toml file with messages and expected responses that that will should be replayed to the tested user and then we want user to test which is just going to be user to test. Okay, so that's done and I guess I need to zoom in a bit. My, my, I have a spam bot here. I need to block them. How do I block somebody on, on, on Twitch? I don't know.
Anyhow, I'm not even going to deal with it. Okay, so... Now it's frozen. My computer is frozen. Fine. Uh, so... Where was I? Um, I had just added these command line arguments and now I need to go ahead and change the main.rs file for the uh, matrix bot tester so that it uses, rather than this fin syntax, it uses the args parse syntax and And I need to import args as well. So I'm going to do exter I'm I'm not sure if I recall correctly. Uh-huh. Extern create um No, that's not what I want. Uh My rust is rusty. You is it just like this, perhaps? I really need to set up my computer so that it automatically shows errors. Um, I'm going to go ahead and look at some reference project that I have so that I can see what the way to the proper way to import these things is. Uh, import libraries that are local to the application is. So here I have a main.rs and then I have mod. Yeah, so I have to declare the modules and then like that. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll go and try uh, running a cargo um, check and see if it doesn't help me out. But it's actually running every time I save and it's telling me that It can't resolve the packages that I've listed in cargo.toml. So I need to figure that out first, why these packages can't be resolved. Does my has something changed since last week that it no longer is able to build a GIO? Build failed. Failed to run custom build command. F uh, I think I know what the problem is. I'm silly. I'm in the wrong environment. 
I need to be here uh, in the Docker uh, container. Then it'll work. CD and then util matrix bot tester cargo build. It's downloading dependencies. And it again has this trouble. So I'm going to go and see if the package that I know was working and building correctly last week still works. CD matrix geographic user index cargo build. And this builds fine. So here, I think that I have exactly the same clap 3.11, clap 3.11, config 0 0.93, 0 0.93. I just copied them, so why is it no longer working? Something has changed in the meantime. Some package has been revoked. That's a bit concerning. And if I do, I seem to remember that there's a cargo update command or Okay, that only updates cargo.lock. And what if I go ahead and look through like clap and I doubt the matrix bot API uh, library has been updated since it's just ancient uh, and it seems to be no longer maintained, but config or uh, clap might have new updates that would fix this. So the current uh, version of clap is 3.1.18 and I have 3.1.1, .1, so I'll try 3.1.18. And then I can go ahead and do cargo build again. And this did not help. Uh, config is also probably has a new uh, library version, 1.3.1. OK. Hopefully there's not like massive breaking changes that I'll waste time with. Oh, it didn't help. And is there like some kind of cargo graph? Uh, there, there's not a cargo graph command built in, so maybe there will be one. So this is archived by the owner. Do they say why? I need to find an alternative. Cargo tree. So I'll try if cargo tree tells me something about 
Well, that was useless. So which of our, okay, so it says that matrix bot API is a dependency of matrix bot tester and that fractal matrix API is a dependency of matrix bot API and GIO is a dependency of fractal matrix API and Fragile is a dependency of GIO 0 0.7.0. So I'm going to look at uh, GIO, uh-huh. It's been updated since then quite a significantly. Fractal Matrix API. It's a little bit funny that the package that's refusing to build is called Fragile. It's the latest, it was last updated three years ago. <laughs> and there's seven versions of Fragile. 0 0.3.0 is there. I'm confused. Seems like that should be selectable. What's the difficulty here? Aha, uh -huh, those versions were yanked. Do they have some kind of explanation for why? Seems quite quite unfortunate that they yanked the issues unless there was like some <laughs> somebody else's so well now we have the trouble that the dependencies were yanked and So somebody asked, but no answer. It was literally yanked just, wait, it's April 6th. That's quite a while ago. But I guess I had already pulled in that dependency before it was yanked. So last, so it builds still because I still have it in my system. Hmm. So I guess I'll I'll go ahead and uh, at least subscribe to this issue so I might find out what the problem is. But I'm not really sure what I can do now in order to get a GIO working given that its dependency was, <laughs> was yanked. Um, Fragile provides a wrapper provides wrapper types for sending non send values to other threads, um, and that doesn't seem like something that's likely to be really security critical. <laughs> um, It seems that despite the fact that it was yanked, it's still being downloaded 29 times. How is that possible? Is there a way to um, download or install something that was yanked? Uh, 
I'll go ahead and look at the, the diff. Maybe there's some nefarious reason why it was yanked. Um, so since... Um, so everything up to 1.1.0 1 .1 was yanked and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Okay. So commits so there's 11 commits and I don't see any of them as being like security critical That's some pretty dense code. I'm not really understanding it, to be honest. Okay, so I don't see any... Why is this so slow? So I really don't know why those are yanked. We'll find out perhaps. Somebody will add a comment at some point. Um, but for now I need to figure out how to install a yanked package. So I'm going to try with cargo build locked as they suggest. Doesn't help. Uh, maybe cargo build force. No.
Okay, so here's a problem that they are doing exactly the same. They want to Okay, there was no 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 solution. Okay. This is quite the distraction, really. I, I find this really... I hope there's a good reason for this. It's frustrating. <laughs> uh, I think that maybe if I go and copy the lock file... Uh, from the other library, then I'll be able to do it. Yeah, that's terrible. Does it work? We'll see. We're going to have some extra extraneous dependencies that don't belong there, but what can you do? At least this will allow me to continue working. So where were we? So we were installing, uh, we were trying to build this and we were trying to build it because I actually wanted to figured out if the syntax I was using was correct for lo loading a module. So I'll go ahead and close that because I'm working in Docker now. And I wanted to know if the syntax for um, what, what the proper syntax was for loading a module from yourself. And Yes, this is what I want. It can a package with both a library and a binary. Use mylib test. Okay. Probably like that, and here I want to
Wait, is this really necessary? I don't I don't really know. I'm still quite confused by the the directory structure of Rust projects, to be honest. Um, so here I have main.rs, and then I'm going to have a lib.rs, but what would I even put in the lib.rs? Um, uh, I don't want to like stuff everything in lib.rs. I want to, I want to create sub, sub files or subdirectories even. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to use this method. I'm just going to try to go ahead and do mod lib and then use args and see what happens. And here, rather than doing r, well, I guess I can explicitly include Probably not two curly brackets, but only one. And now, this is quite slow. I thought it was going to be very fast because everything's built already. I think check is the command that I need. It's supposed to be like the super fast thing that just checks for errors but doesn't actually do any building or linking or anything like that. Maybe next time it'll be fast. So here we have unresolved import args. I'm going to go ahead and run that again. Oh, God, it's so it's the second time it's fast. Okay, so I need to create an empty mod.rs file. And put it in util, util, matrix bot tester. I had thought that I just created uh, that directory. <laughs> now I'm kind of confused. Did I put it in the wrong place? Did I put it in the geographic user index, for example? Where did I put the args? Because I remember that well, there was an args.rs file. 
Uh huh. I did put it there. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And in the shell, I will copy it over to the proper place. And then we have these errors. Hmm, have I fixed that one yet? Use of undeclared create args. Uh, maybe I need to use lib args. Could not find args in lib. But it certainly is there, lib args. Just going to clean up that wrongly created uh, folder. And so I have this args file in lib. Hopefully it's on the right path now. Yes. And yet it says it could not find args in lib. Hmm. Go ahead and look at the Gradusta code again to see how it, it worked. Or I guess even the matrix, uh, the the geographic user index code, successfully loads modules. For example, from so. Uh-huh. It's doing something very different than what I'm doing. It's doing, it doesn't even have this mod. It just has use matrix bot tester lib args. matrix geographic user index is declared there, but this isn't declared. How so? This is certainly a great wait. SRC name of the package is matrix geographic user index. If I go to cargo.toml here, what's the name of the package? Matrix bot tester. Seems like that should be very similar. So going back to the main.rs file, um, hmm.
I'm not seeing the difference here, but I do see one difference, which is that, um, go away. Uh huh. So, so one difference that's obvious is that in the other place, there is not a subdirectory. It's just immediately in the right place. Um, but that wouldn't explain what's going on here. Matrix bot tester, matrix bot tester, matrix bot tester. Seems like there's not a spelling error. I'm trying to fix the error that I see with config that they were saying that there's a method that's been renamed or deleted or something. So I'm downgrading config to the previous version. So I don't have to deal with those changes. So I've at least gotten rid of the, the config errors, but I still have this problem that I'm not able to even load my own code. Um, despite the fact that I don't really see the big difference between my code, I'm going to go and try to make it as similar as possible. So I'm going to uh, u2 matrix bot tester and I'm going to mv lib args dot slash args dot rs and rm minus rf lib since it's no longer interesting and then in here in this main file I'm going to get rid of the lib and I'm going to use a star so that it's exactly the same syntax as the other main file that I know works. So use name of project colon colon name of module colon colon star. It's exactly the same. And yet in this case, it doesn't work. So I'm going to go ahead and try to create a lib.rs file to see if it doesn't help and do the pubmod args. Okay, so that's frustrating. It was just some silly bureaucratic step that I had to go through to get it to load. Not really sure what's up with that. I guess if I were to reread again the Rust uh, manual, <laughs> I would recall that fact, but anyhow, I figured out the problem, and let's move on. Mm. So I guess now I need to go and look at creates.io clap, and maybe I have a wrong version. Okay, I'm in the same version. So clap. 
clap parser. I just really copied that from Clap parser, it's pretty much exactly copied from the example, and yet there's still a problem. Derive parser, parser is import imported here, but it is only a trait without a derived macro. So this isn't saying anything about oh. so that's pretty obvious now what the problem is. Uh, go away. Now, cargo check. I always get a really good feeling about it, right? Before it goes and gives us an error. Um, okay, so args is having trouble being loaded. Uh, it's a private struct. is not found in help items from traits can only be used if the trait is in scope uh -huh. maybe this is what I need copy things properly. I'm always uh, using control shift V in Firefox and using control uh, or control shift C in Firefox and control C in the terminal. I can never get it straight. Okay, so now I only have it on warning, and uh, it's that we're not using the args, which we will do so shortly. Great, so now I can get back to actually programming. Um, so I wanted to load the... Username and password and uh, home server uh, from 
the bot config file that's specified at args.botconfig. And I then wanted to uh, replay to the, I wanted to start a conversation with a specific user that's specified in the args. And then I want to replay things from the Tamil file. Um, I'm not really sure what this config library does, but it seems to parse Tamil in some way. I'm not sure if it can be used in the way that I need to, which is to get a list of tuples or a list of pairs um, of messages to send to the tested bot and messages to expect from them. So Layered configuration system for Rust applications with strong support for 12-factor applications. Uh, I don't remember what 12-factor is. Um, set default, set explicit values to prog programmatically override. Read from Ison, Tomal, YAML. It just occurred to me that it would actually maybe make sense to not have two different files that we would actually um, uh, I should make it so that the also contains and then it needs to contain a list of tuples yeah, that kind of makes sense, I think, to just have one file, just to make things really super clean and centralized. Of course, it would be bad if those credentials were secret. I'm not sure if you're ever going to have secret credentials in such a test uh, environment, though. Um, or maybe, maybe it's better just to have them separate. Yeah, it's better just to have them separate so that you don't ever have to worry about separating secrets and data. Um, perhaps you would have a test server that was, was, for example, accessible from the internet, and so you wanted to keep those values secret. Okay, so it does support... Um, subscript operators like this uh, so it supports like lists of dictionaries which is great I'm not sure maybe I actually need to look at the documentation to figure out how to do a list of dictionaries In the meantime, I can go and try to load this guy up. So, Rust likes to be very, very explicit about what kind of pointers are you're sending around. And it says that uh, the... Uh, do I need to do this?
true. Why is that mutable? Okay, so that's just some weird... So get string modify settings. It's a little bit strange. I guess maybe there's some caching going on or something. Anywho. So, so now it's working and I was looking up in the documentation for config how to read from the config. So there's this get string. So we have a config object, I guess. And it has a get string uh, method. And I want to get array method or a get table maybe. I'm not really sure what the difference when you get array and get table is. Okay, so get table is probably what I want. Um, so I want to get table and that'll have like a table of values that are mapping uh, expected and uh, or messages sent and expected responses. Uh, so So I want to do replay dot get table messages dot unwrap And then I need to do a loop over these over this map. Um, wait. And there's not a way to get an array from like to have the entire file be done an array? I guess there's not. Um, and what are these values? I don't understand what the values are. Can a value be a tuple or a dictionary? Uh-huh, so I want to do uh, get array messages and then for each message I'm just going to write pseudocode here for each message in messages I'm going to do message dot uh, into table Dot unwrap. And I'm going to uh, let me let message pair equals that, and then I need to look up. I don't even remember how. 
Hash maps are used in Rust. So I want to like writing pseudocode again. I'm going to do like uh, uh, send to user message pair uh, dot entry, and the entry I want is. like maybe maybe it'll be like send and expect will be the two things that we Uh-huh, maybe it's actually get is what I should be using. And And then args dot user would be the username. And then bot receive from user if not if not. args.user. So if the message that we receive back using pseudocode again uh, is not equal to then we're going to go ahead and exit So we're going to do the print line I guess like every message that we send and receive should be printed. So we'll use the let. And then let
and then we do we we exit with an error std process dot exit and we need to import std process okay obviously this is going to not work because that was just pseudocode so the first thing i need to do is remember how uh, loops work in rust uh, so So I just need to get rid of the each. Okay, so expected to here. User to test, uh huh. <laughs> okay, so obviously bot is not in scope because that was pseudocode, and uh, they don't like the parens around the if statement condition, and SD process is unused, how so? Is these right here, isn't it? Okay, so now I need to have, figure out how to actually use this bot API in the way that I need to. Um, so obviously it's not going to be using some passive handler. It's going to be actively like going out and contacting a user. And it's then going to have to like, I, I actually want to use just a blocking wait uh, because this bot is only going to be talking to one user at a time. So I'm going to go to, go to I'm going to go to create.io and uh, look up that library again, matrix bot API. and look at the examples. I think that there was one that was asynchronous and the other one that was asynchronous. Um, so this is the one that we used uh, last week. Um, what is stateless?
Is it wait? Is it possible to have like a matrix bot with no handler? So maybe what I need to do, do I need to do like full like chained async functions that I would have like a register handler function that would register a handler and then register another handler and register another handler, kind of like recursively consuming the list of messages that should be sent and expected? Or is there some other way to handle messages in this library? self dot backend So it seems to me like I should probably actually not use this library, this high level library, and use the lower level library called um, Fractal Matrix API and just use uh, the channels. It's actually much simpler to do that in this case. Um, Create.io. Fractal Matrix API and has no README file. Lovely. It's GPL 3.0, which um, means that it's just ba barely compatible with the HGPL license that I com <laughs> that I chose. Um, Documentation is here, 404, lovely. But at least, what's that? Okay, so Fractal is a matrix messaging app for GNOME written in Rust. Its interface is optimized for collaboration in large groups such as free software projects. Oh, fine, lovely. And then they have an API. Uh,
Uh huh. So there's like a matrix rest SDK. I see. So basically, the library that the library that I'm using is built on is no longer like supported, and this one is in an alpha state. Um, Does it at least have documentation? I guess I can check on uh, uh, crates.io matrix rest S SDK um, That's weird. But at 52 contributors, it's not like this is tiny. It's not like this is a non-project. Uh-huh, but it's named right? matrix SDK, not matrix rest SDK. Okay, a high-level batteries included matrix client library written in Rust. This crate seeks to be a general purpose library for writing software using the matrix client server API to communicate with the matrix home server. If you're writing a typical matrix client robot, it is likely the crate you need. However, the crate is designed in a modular way and depends on several other low-level crates. If you are attempting something more custom, you might be interested in these. Matrix SDK base, uh, matrix SDK crypto. Okay, so um, do they have a way of like creating linearized code? So here again, they're registering event handlers. And does that mean I have to re-register the event handler every time? Uh, I guess we should look at client to see what's available to us in the API. So client here has set home server, um, so it has register event handler is what they were calling there. Um, does it have some kind of just receive? That would be like maybe synchronous. So logging in looks simple enough. Uh, 
I'm not sure how to start a private message. Create room. Uh, and then request. So I'm going to have to look up what these requests are. One way that I guess would uh, work um, would be to use the other matrix bot API and uh, use the stateful uh, type of handler. So I would use uh, with state and then I would uh, like in this incrementer dec decrementer thing, uh, rather than using that loop that I had written out, I would, um, yeah, I would uh, have the list in here, like the list of messages, and I would just go through the list there. But then the question still remains, how do you start the conversation? Like this is handling messages in a room, but how do you like like start out and stay, create that private chat uh, with the other matrix bot that you want to talk to. Okay, so, um, When it's run, it just it just has this handle message um, function. So matrix bot API. Um, and I want to go and look at the source for the bot so I can see what kind of so as a run method has a handle receipt oh those are private so it's only public method is run so does it not have the ability to then start a conversation with somebody else? So basically this, this library only knows how to respond to things, which is actually enough for, for like the vegan buddies, uh, bot, but it's not enough for the test bot because the test bot needs to go and contact the vegan buddies, uh, the geographic user index bot and, uh, then start asking it questions. Okay. Mm. And is backend public or private? If backend was public, then we could get around this. But it's not, right? 
I didn't see any pubs here. Uh huh. So create a copy of the internal active bot instance for sending messages. Get active bot clone. And. What is this active bot thing? Where does it come from? Where is it defined? Mm-hmm. Mm hmm so I need to create room and invite the user. Okay, so it looks like I'm actually going to have to switch which library I'm using because it seems to me that this does not have the ability to create a room, right? Yeah, so there's no way to to create a room using this library. So I'm going to have to, uh, uh, to switch to using Matrix SDK uh, for the test bot. And I'm going to do that next week because it's been over almost two hours of uh, coding live and I'm too tired to continue. Okay, so next week I will be switching the test bot over to um the matrix matrix rust sdk that's all for now and goodbye